Maria, Bill, and Molly. As a group, please decide to increase the OCR by 0.25 basis point. Our decision is based on the analysis of the change in the economic activity and the economic outlook for the forecast period. And this is what we took into account when we made our decision. Change to aggregate demand and aggregate supply, the output gap, economic growth, and the inflation. I will start my analysis with consumer spending due to the valuable consumer spending is the largest component of aggregate demand. Firstly, strong consumer confidence is already coming through uh, increases in consumer spending. That's right, it shows that the retail sales grow accelerate, consumer spending grows about 3%. In the forecast period, we expect consumer confidence to stay strong. Also, strong consumer confidence is underprinted by the increases in employment. In the year to March 2014, employment increased by 3.7%. Therefore, consumer feels safe regarding their job and more willing to spend. We believe as New Zealand economy grows, the employment will continue to stay high as well. However, as can be seen from this one, wages and salaries are increasing very modestly. So they are not adding to inflationary pressures. I would expect this to change by the end of the year when the labor market tightens. That migration is adding to consumer spending. As we could see, positive net migration means more consumers and more demands for goods and services. In addition, increased migration will bring additional demand for houses. However, it's increasing inflationary pressures by adding the demand for houses. But we believe as New Zealand economy continues to grow, New Zealand will continue to be attractive for prospective immigrants from Australia, Europe, and Asia. House prices are also affecting consumer spending. This graph shows a high, degree, a high degree of correlation between private consumption and house prices. As we could see, it still continues to grow, although the growth has slightly slowed down. This is due to, as the interest rate increases, less people taking loan. Secondly, this year, the Reserve Bank has increased the percentage of deposit that the consumer has to provide to get a mortgage loan to buy a house. Consequently, this has put many consumers out of the market. However, a general increase in the price of housing market will create wealth events, and consumers feel wealthy and more ready to stay. So we believe the price in housing market will be increased, but at a slower rate. The another major item in equity market is business investment. As we could see, the business confidence is still relatively high, although it has decreased most recently. And as we could see from the graph here, over 20% of business intends to invest in plant and machinery, and that will certainly have an effect on employment and more income spent money. Price charge review is going to provide a huge boost to aggregate demand as well. It's estimated that $1 billion in New Zealand local economy. Those include around half for residential, a quarter for commercial and infrastructure. With that billion, you will even spend more in the next following year. On the government spending, the government spending for this year will produce a deflationary effect of the economy. So we don't expect this year budget to cause any inflationary pressures. Conversely, it will have a deflationary pressures because of its contractionary effect of the economy. Especially, this contractionary effect is the result of the fact that the budget is in a small surplus. Finally, the last component in aggregate demand is net export. The net export of New Zealand in the forecast period will be affected by exchange trade, terms of trade, and the economic growth in country that are New Zealand trending up. Firstly, higher exchange rate makes export more expensive and less competitive. However, the negative effect of exchange rate is partly compensated by the high price of export commodity. Although the price of commodity has decreased recently, the terms of trade are still relatively high in historical perspective. Also, 
the economic growth in New Zealand training partner is expected to continue and that will certainly bring additional demand for New Zealand goods. On the agricultural supply side, we have considered cost of production. Closing output gap means the unemployment getting smaller and smaller. So there are less and less spare resources. Fewer resources, more expensive. More expensive and spare resources, higher cost of production. On the other side, increasing productivity and efficiency will produce a downward pressure on cost. In addition, positive net migration means increases in the supply of labor. Thus, it will ease the labor market and pressures on wages. Finally, higher exchange rate will continue to produce a positive effect by decreasing the cost of imported raw material and chemical. Overall, we expect the economic growth exceed 3.5%. We expect headline inflation to be relatively low this in time. However, non trainable inflation is expected to go above the target rate. Especially, utility and price charge review will be the main reason for this. In terms of this one, the shade area shows the inflation target rate between 1 to 3%. Let's say the New Zealand economy recovering from recession and is operating here. As we could see, the deflationary gap is closer to the deep part of to the steep part of aggregate supply curve, which is mean any further increases in aggregate demand will have a greater effect on the price level than the real GDP. Thus, we believe the proposed two increases in OCR could certainly prevent this. We have also took into account on inflationary expectation that we see the target range around 2%. So the expected inflation will not throw inflationary decision by consumer and producer. In conclusion, when we made our decision, we have both took into account, uh, took into account on inflationary and deflationary pressures. In our opinion, those are the determinants that will cause inflationary pressures. As I mentioned, we expect the output gap to decrease, and that will certainly increase the price of input and cost of production. Secondly, the price in housing market will be increased, but at a slower rate. Consumer confidence is high, so we expect income keeps increasing and consumer spending to stay strong. Terms of trade to stay relatively variable and added to inflationary pressure as well. Also, Strong growth in investment, especially price structure construction. On the other side, increasing productivity and the migration will both contribute to decrease the cost of production. Higher exchange rate will continue to make imported raw material and consumer goods much cheaper. The government budget for this year will produce a contractionary effect of the economy. In summary, we believe that inflationary pressures will outweigh deflationary pressures. We've thus made a conclusion that increase the OCR by 0.25 basis point to be the reasonable decision. Thank you.
So we think the positive net migration will take more consumer in New Zealand. So there will be an increase in demand of the goods and service. So there will be an increase in the aggregate demand. So there will be an increase in the inflation. And also the increase in the uh, positive migration will take a uh, uh, like increase in the labor supply. So the cost of the uh, like uh, rebuild in the price church and the construction in the century will be cheaper. So there will be an uh, increase in the inflation. So in your presentation, If the rate below 
it's a risk to take deflationary risk, you know, because um, people just make just keep the money and and it's discouraged to save, uh, discouraged spend, and which is a uh, bad for the economy, and it's hard to come back. The price stability is uh, like the go for. Here, right? From here. 